Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial on using input fields with Material UI. Looking at Material UI input fields, we can see four default options at our disposal. The first one will create a basic input field. The second will create an input field with an icon on the left. The third will create one with a clear button. And the fourth one has an icon and a clear button. Let's take a look at the last one for this tutorial. As with most basic Material UI components, we can toggle the input field enabled to enable or disable our input field. Next, we have the hint text. This is shown to the user, telling them what the input is for. Let's rename it to email, for example. We then have the floating hint option. When toggled, the hint text will float above the input field when selected, instead of just fading away. We can change the font size of the floating hint. We can also change the font size of all of the text components in an input field to suit our needs. Next, we have the has character counter toggle, which, you guessed it, controls whether the character counter beneath the input field is shown. We also have the match input field character limit parameter that will hard limit the amount of text to whatever is set in the Unity text field component. Another option is to specify our own limit by unchecking the toggle and setting our number. Let's make it 5. As you can see, we're no longer restricted to just typing in only 5 characters, but the counter lets us know if there's too much text. Next, you'll see the Has Validation option. We'll look at this a bit more in depth later in this video. We then have the Manual Preferred Width option. It's useful for when the input field is inside a layout group. As you can see, the input field takes up the entire width of this panel thanks to Child Force Expand being toggled on the layout group. If we uncheck it, we'll see that the input field has a width of 0. We can fix this by toggling Manual Preferred Width and setting it to 200. We can also change the Manual Preferred Height by unchecking the Fit to Height option and defining our own height. Now, let's remove the vertical layout group from the panel. You can see that we cannot change the height of the input field. This is because we've specified a Manual Preferred Height. We'll now turn Fit to Height back on. Next, we have the left and right content offset. We can play with this to add an offset to our icon or clear button. The final parameter of this section is the animation duration. Let's see what happens when we set this to 2. Next, we have all the colors we can apply to the input field from a single place. Let's try customizing things a bit. We can, of course, set a default text and set the line type to single or multi-line. Now, let's talk about input field validation. We have two ways of achieving this. The first is to use the content type option in the Unity component, which will allow users to only type the allowed characters. Alternatively, we can use Material UI's validation for more flexibility. This will display a small message underneath the input field if the text isn't valid. Let's take a look at an example. To get text validation working, we can create a simple script that implements iTextValidator and use our own logic in it using the isTextValid method. To use this, we just attach the script to any game object, toggle the has validation option on the input field, then drag and drop that game object to the appropriate field. Let's try it out. We can also do all this via code. We just need a reference to the material input field and define a custom validator in the awake method or anywhere we like. There are some predefined validators we can use in the text validator utils class, such as empty text, email, name, password, and same password validator. Let's use the email one for now. The last option is the validate on start toggle. If enabled, the input field will check the text validation upon start. Otherwise, it will validate the text when it's first selected. Well, that's it for this tutorial on input fields. Be sure to check out the input field example scene to play with them for yourself. See you soon for the next tutorial.